So there you have it, the runners and riders of UFC 295's main card, all weighed in, all done and dusted and ready to throw down for our entertainment at Madison Square Garden tomorrow evening. Yes. What have we learnt, gentlemen, this week? We'll start with the main event, shall we? Obviously, light heavyweight title on the line. Yuri Plahatchka spent a bit of time with him. We've also spent some time with Alex Pereira. What have you learnt from speaking to these guys what this week? What have I learned? I've learned that they're both two dialed in, very, very capable fighters. Honestly, I'm split. I mean, I'm leaning towards Yuri Prohaska, but then when you look at Alex Pereira mm. and the more we talk about what he's achieved and how good he is and how deadly he is, that makes me second guess myself. What have I learned? This fight is going to be absolutely ridiculous. They've just done nothing but impress me all week, both of them. And you know it's a close fight when you spend time with one fight and you come away thinking, yeah, yeah. he's got this locked down. Yeah. And then you go and spend time with the other fight and you go, actually, he's got this <laughs> locked down. And you would suggest that, listen, Yeri never lost the belt inside the octagon. He lost it because of injury. He relinquished the belt. So this is kind of like his next defence. But Alex is just riding this crest of a wave right now. The middleweight, the journey he's been on, second time headlining at Madison Square Garden. The narrative is being painted for Alex Pereira, and it's often that's how things play out, but anything could happen. I'll tell you what, mm. I'll tell you what I've learned, that Yuri Prohaska has razor reflexes. Because we were talking, and I just like went to mess around and do a single leg and just boom, uppercutted me right in the face. <laughs> I took a shot from the champ, and I took it like a champ, but he's, he's ready, he's locked in. Are you concerned in any way, shape or form about inactivity and that big injury? It was a massive injury, he's been away for 15 months. I don't think so. Okay. I think when you look at the body of work that he's had, the amount of experience, the different type of styles that he's fought, mm -hmm. and just the mindset of Yuri. That's what really impresses me about him. Obviously, he's a physical specimen. He's a gigantic light heavyweight. Yeah. You know, he does all the work, but the mind, the mind is the most powerful tool. Mm. And Yuri's mind mm. is extremely special. So is Alex, but we always say ring rust is kind of, you know, it's all in the mind, it's yeah. all in the head. I think he's going to walk out there, he's going to be hungry to get back in there. He wants to take back what he feels rightly is his belt mm. remember he didn't get beat he didn't lose it he had to relinquish it because of an injury now he's coming back he wants to prove to the world listen that's mine I'm the champ but Alex Pereira he likes it in MSG doesn't he made his debut here obviously became the champ at middleweight here and becomes the first person ever in UFC history to headline Madison Square Garden twice and he's done it all in two years. Yeah. This fella's development in the world of mixed martial arts has been truly sensational. It's insane. And it, it, it's just a shame he's at the age and life he is. If he was 10 years younger, we'd be already talking, well, what's this guy going to achieve in the next 10 yeah. years? This is, the, he is potentially the greatest of all time. So he's had to take big fights because he is playing catch up, but they don't come any bigger than this. And if he wins tomorrow night, he becomes a two way champion in 11 professional MMA fights. And in beats him four champs. It's yeah. just. Insane, absolutely insane that someone's come into the sport, made as big a splash as he has. And, you know, we, we were lucky enough to chat with Glover earlier. You feel like he's a sponge, that's why. He's mm. an a all-in martial artist. And he's just getting better with every fight. He proved that last time with Jan as well. You want to go to the ground? I can be on the ground, it's not a problem. And I can still win fights, and that's important. And I needed to see that in his last fight to go. Actually, against even if he really does take him down, Alex is not like a fish out of water. Yeah. And he showed that he can dig deep. Exactly. Because so far, a lot of his performances, you know, he's gone out there, he's got the knockout power, he puts people to sleep, and that's great. It's well and good being the hammer. We all want to see that, but sometimes you've got to be able to be the nail, take a whooping, mm. but then still not give up mentally. And that's yeah. what he showed in that one, that's because right. that was a real tough back and forth fight. Yeah. Listen, it's a fascinating main event for the light heavyweight title. 50-50 with all the bookies. It's 50-50 in the core main oh. as well with all the bookies too. We've got the interim heavyweight title on the line Sergey Pavlovich against Tom Aspinall anything that you've picked up this week that you think to yourself Oof. anything I've picked up a lot of abuse from American fans a lot of people call me biased a lot of people say oh I hope he's not commentating well guess what I'm not <laughs> that's why I'm allowed to give an opinion normally I wouldn't dream of doing of that but it's not because Tom's from our neck of the woods it's not because he's English it's not because we're mates it's because of the body of work it's mm. because of the results he's had in the octagon the way that he steamrolled everybody gone right through them now granted Sergei Pavlovich it's impossible not to like this man when you speak to him yeah. he's got this big warm infectious smile he's got a great sense of humor he's very very humble and he's also a monster Ooh. so listen i'm all about tom you know but when you spend a little time around sergey yeah. i'm like oh 
Oh, I don't know. He's a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, a, nice he's a nice guy, but he's. A I monster. would not want to be down a dark alley with no. him. <laughs> and listen, uh, and I wouldn't like to be locked in a cage with him, of course. And that's because we know what he's done. Is I'd last, rather be in a dark alley. Is, 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 yeah. <laughs> At least you can run. There's exactly. a way out. <laughs> Leg it. But it's, like Tom, it's the body of work. It's his last six fights, first all first round knockouts. Last three against ranked opponents mm. as well. There's a reason why Sergio is ranked as the number two in the world. There's a reason why he was back up for Stipe versus John Jones because he's right there. But. Tom's equally right there as well. So listen, anything could happen in this fight, kind of like the main events as well. Yeah. Whoever lands first, that could be the most telling moment of the fight. If it hits the ground, you'd like to think Tom might have advantages on the ground, but we just don't know how good Sergei's background in wrestling and combat sambo actually is. Maybe he's a monster on the ground, so. It's all down to the footwork. If you ask me, if Tom is loose and he's dancing around and he's using all of the space in the octagon, because trust me, if you've never been in an octagon, when you walk in there, it's huge. Yeah. So Tom needs to use all of that space. But if Sergey can cut him off, if he can make it small, if he can back him up against the fence, then, well, that's the key to victory for Sergey. I'm not yes. even going to say the words because Tom's over there and he might hear me, he might come over here, abuse me, he might get me in a headlock. You know, Tom likes to give me a hard time. But if Sergey cuts off the ring. Mm. Yeah. Then it's going to be a bit it's of a, very a tougher small place. fight. Yeah. yeah, it's a very small place. Of course, we lost the star power of Jones and Stipe, but as we're talking about high-level mixed martial arts, it doesn't get better than this main and core does it? And it doesn't get much more international. Oh. That's what I love about this sport now. It's really growing. It's a worldwide phenomenon. We've got Brazil, we've got the Czech Republic, we've got Russia, we've got England, and that's just in the main and the core main. Yeah. Yeah. Top to bottom, these fights are incredible. The fighters, the standard of them is getting better every single year, and the proof is in the pudding. I mean, look at these guys and what they're capable of. Yeah, just 30 years ago when this sport started, the anniversary, of course, is tomorrow night was a million miles away from where we are now. Well, it wasn't even a sport, was it? It was a spectacle back then. And over the last three decades, it's developed into the most exciting sport on the planet. And the, the evolution of the athletes, and obviously then the money coming in, has allowed more athletes to come into the sport because you can actually, when Mike first started, you couldn't make a living in this sport. Mm. That's why I do this now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm skinned. But now, Lies. you can see 10, 11, 12 year old kids getting into this sport and maybe yeah. thinking, I can make a real career in that, like any other person professional sport like football, like basketball over here, American football, whatever, there's a real progression to become financially incredibly secure and become globally famous. Listen, it's apt that the 30th anniversary show is at Madison Square Garden. Every time we've been here, lads, over the last few years, it's dished up a fight of the year contender. It might be the main, it might be the core men, and if it's none of them, it's definitely going to be for a baller in St. Denis. Ben Marson Denis, <laughs> I mean, that man is just action, violence, intensity. Souls Matt Frivola. Mm. So, yeah, that's a good shout, Adam. When they both weighed in earlier, they both looked incredibly uncomfortable, incredibly, you know, dialed in at the weigh-ins. Like, mm. these two are going to be... You're going to have to separate them just getting inside the cage. As soon as that bell goes... I, listen, if I was a steward in that cage, I'd get out of there damn quick. Because as soon as that bell goes, these two are just going to fly at one another and it's going to be mental. What do you like to say? Wasps in a pint glass or whatever? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly I think it's what gonna this look is like. Wasps in a pint glass. I think it's going to be more frogs in a blender. Yeah, frogs right. in a blender. Yeah. Something right. like that. That's what I think okay. it's going to be. Make sure you're with us uh, for this incredible card, Madison Square Garden, 30 years of the UFC, UFC 295, and it all goes down on TNT Sports 1 and Discovery Plus. We've got the prelims from 1am with the main card from 3.